Now we would like to see the names of the bones of the upper limb in the articulated skeleton. Our first two bones are the clavicles. This is the right clavicle and this is the left clavicle. Okay. Our second bone will be the two scapulae. Okay. This is the right scapula and this is the left the left scapula, okay? The two scapulae posterior. Okay? Again, our third bone, this is the bone of the of the arm, is the humerus. The humerus. Next are the bones of the forearm, the one that is medially. This is the ulna, and the one that is laterally. This is the radius. Okay, bones of the forearm are the ulna and radius. Okay, next, this is the hands. The bones of the hand are divided into carpal bones, metacarpal bones, and phalanges. Now, we will see each one of these bones separately to identify features. And we will mention some or uh, much of uh, muscular attachment. Don't worry. It will, uh, now you will know the names, but in the following practicals, you will see the muscles individu individually. Okay? Don't bother. We will just mention the names. We will see them next practicals. Now let's go to our first bone, which is the clavicle. Hello again. Our first bone is the clavicle. The clavicle is a long bone that is lies horizontally and very superficially in the upper crest. The clavicle has got a medial rounded end this is the medial end and a lateral flat end. The medial end is rounded and the lateral end is flat. It has got two surfaces. The superior surface which is smooth and an inferior surface which is rough. Actually the inferior surface is roughened by the attachment to a ligament. For example, in the medial surface, here it is roughened by the attachment of the costoclavicular ligament. And on the lateral aspect, there is this tubercle, which is called the conoid tubercle, that gives attachment to the conoid ligament. And this line called the trapezoid line for the trapezoid ligament. So the inferior surface is roughened because of attachment of the ligament medially, costoclavicular ligament, and laterally, those two together are called coracoclavicular ligament. In between them, there is in the inferior surface is a groove for the subclavius muscle. So this is the groove for the subclavius muscle. All right. Now there is anterior anterior border and a posterior border. Okay. In the anatomical position, the anterior border, the medial two third is convex forward and the lateral one third is concave forward all right in the medial border the clavicle provide attachment for a muscle called sternocleidomastoid so in the superior surface of the medial border 
the clavicular head of steroidomastoid gives is attached here. In the lateral, lateral aspect of the clavicle, anteriorly, it provides attachment for the deltoid. And posteriorly, it provides an attachment for the trapezius muscle. Of course, the lateral end articulate with the scapula and the medial end articulate with the clavicle, articulate with the sternum and with the ferris costal cartilage. All right. Uh, after we have seen the general features of the clavicle, now we have to identify, is it right or left? We have said all the features. You have to put the rounded end medially and the flattened end laterally. And you have to put the smooth surface superiorly and then to figure out. So this is my right clavicle. If we look at the other set of the clavicle, so this is our next clavicle. This, is, this end is rounded, while this end is flattened. So this is, the medial, this is the medial end, and this is the lateral end. This surface is smooth, while this surface is rough. This is the coracoclavicular ligament, and this is the costoclavicular ligament. So this is the inferior surface. So after putting the two ends, this is the medial end, and this is the superior surface. This is my left clavicle, and those are the two clavicles in the anatomical position. Okay, this is my this is my right one, and this is my left one. Okay. Okay, that's all for the clavicle. Our next bone is the scapula. As you can see. The scapula is triangular in shape. It is flat bone found in the posterior aspect of the thoracic cavity of the rib cage. It has got three borders: superior border, lateral border, which is thick, and a medial border, which is thin. It also has got three angles. This one is the inferior angle. This one is the superior angle. And this lateral end that contains the glenoid is the lateral angle. The scapula has got two surfaces. The anterior one, which is uh, immediately behind the ribs is the costal surface and this one is the dorsal surface All right talking about superior border it traverses from the superior angle and courses laterally somehow downward to dip in this notch which is the scapular notch. From here, this process is called the coracoid process. So the neck of the coracoid process immediately behind the scapular notch, right? As we said, the lateral border is thicker and the medial border is thin. This surface, which is the anterior surface, contains the, the subscapular notch. You can see here these ridges for the multi, multi pinnate fibers of the subscapularis muscle, which arises from the medial two thirds of the subscapular notch. Right? Posteriorly, the posterior surface is divided 
by this projection which is the spine into a supra spinous notch that contain supraspinatus muscle and an infraspinatus fossa which contain infraspinatus muscle if we follow the spine we will see that it will flatten to form the acromion okay this is the acromion all right now talking about this spine the spine provide an attachment for two muscles here is the trapezius muscle and posteriorly and in the outer world for the deltoid muscles all right this area of the scapula is called the glenoid cavity this is the glenoid cavity here upward this area is called the supraglenoid tubercle which provide an attachment for the long head of the biceps and here this area is called the infraglenoid tubercle that will provide an attachment for the long head of the triceps muscle right regarding other muscular attachment the anterior surface in the medial border will provide an attachment for serratus anterior muscle while in the medial surface again but posteriorly will provide an attachment for three muscles in the space above the spine it will provide an attachment for levator scapulae muscle and in the area adjacent to the spine it will provide an attachment for rhomboid minor and below this will provide an attachment for rhomboid major the lateral the lateral surface will provide an attachment for three muscles from downward here at the inferior angle will provide an attachment for a muscle called teres major upward this area will provide an attachment for a muscle called teres minor there is a small groove here if you can see an artery transect the teres minor origin this is circumflex scapular artery okay as we say this is the scapular notch through which passes the suprascapular nerve and vessel from here this process project forward which is the coracoid process the coracoid process provide an attachment for three muscles pectoralis minor uh, coracoprechialis and the short head of biceps Uh, that's all for the, the scapula and its muscular attachment now our last point is to localize the scapula is it right or left in order to say this is a right or left scapula you have to have reference points you have to understand that in the anatomical position the surface with one continuous fossa is anteriorly while the surface with the spine and the 2 for C is posteriorly. So, in the anatomical position, this is the anterior. And you have to know that this is, is called the inferior angle, that means it should be inferiorly, and the glenoid should be superiorly. So, this is the anatomical position. Now, the glenoid cavity also should face laterally. So, this is my right scapula applying the same principles 
this is the anterior surface while this is the posterior surface with the spine this is inferiorly and the glenoid is superiorly and laterally so th those are my two scapulae this is the right scapula while this is the left scapula thank you